One more second. All right, yes, so it's streaming now. So once it's ended, it will be on the channel. It's posted on the channel. Good evening. Just type in Mr. All right, let me type it in. So just go on YouTube and type in Mr. here, and you will see it. All right. So just type in that and you will see all the videos and so forth. If you subscribe to my channel, make sure you click the notification bell. When I make an announcement, start a live or so, you will see it. Right. Okay, so we're going to start with acid base equilibrium. All right, so what I'm going to do. I'm going to put someone else is talking. Just remember to mute the mics. All right, so I'm going to put all the formulas for acid base equilibria on the board and show you when and how to use them. All right. We have several formulas. It's not just pH equal negative log, the concentration of hydrogen ions. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we're doing acid base equilibrium. Number two, mute mics. So formulas now. One, KW is equal to H plus and the concentration of OH minus. And this has a value of one times 10 to the minus 14. This, equa this equation, you will use it if you need to get the concentration of either hydrogen ion or the OH ion. So for example, some, please meet a mic. All right, so remember, so let us say, right, I give you the pH, so you have a pH of 4.5, right? But I want, let's say I want the OH you would have to find the hydroxide ion concentration. What you would do, we, you would find the hydrogen ion concentration first, and then you can plug it into this formula to get OH, all right? If I'm saying it now, we're actually going to practice using it. But I'm just telling from now how it would apply. If you get the pH and you need the OH concentration, you would first get the H plus, then transpose the formula so you can get the OH ion concentration. Yes, I'm, I'm just explaining for now and then we do questions for the person asking. All right, so the first formula I'm introducing it to the KW, which is the ionization constant of water. If they ask you to write it, it is KW equal H plus square brackets because it's concentration times OH. You need to you need to remember that it has a value of one times ten to the minus fourteen. All right, so next formula now. Just check your mics for me, ensure it's muted. All right, so let's get this one out of the way. So everybody know pH is equal to negative log, the concentration of hydrogen ions. Next one you should know pH plus POH 
is equal to 14. All right, again, I'm going to show you how to use them and when it applies. Someone's mic is on. All right, ready again? And I wanted to show you. All right, if you need the hydrogen ion concentration and you have the pH, it's antilog negative pH. All right. Likewise, if you need the hydroxide ion concentration, it's antilog negative. POH. Number six. We also have KA, which is for the weak acid. KA is H plus squared divided by the concentration of the acid. I'm just using HA for a generic acid. All right. And if you need KB, so seven, it's KB, the base dissociation constant, would be OH minus squared divided by the base. I'm just using B minus to represent the concentration of a base. All right, let me see if I'm leaving out any formula. Yes, there's one more. So well, you can transpose this equation to get hydrogen ion concentration, all right? So these formulas, you must know them, all right? So you can just take a picture of it now or write it off so you can apply them. All right, so this is the easiest and simplest calculation that you will get to perform is the pH of a strong acid. For example, very simple and straightforward. What is the pH of a 0 0.25? Remember, capital M is moles per dm cube. Right? So what is the pH of a 0 0.25 moles per dm cube hydrochloric acid solution? By the way, the meeting, it is now filled. So if you have any friends who can't get in, just tell them it's streaming the channel now, they can go over there, all right? So the meeting is filled, so no one else will be able to enter unless someone leaves. All right, so continuing, what is the pH of a 0 0.25 moles per dm cube hydrochloric acid solution? But it's the three strong acids that we use at this level. So we refer to hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. All right, so once you see hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, or sulfuric acid, you can just go ahead and say pH is equal to negative log the concentration of the hydrogen ion. The reason why we can do this, strong acids completely ionize in solution. So whatever the concentration of your strong acid, that will also be the concentration of the hydrogen ion. So that is why we can go ahead, and just plug it into the formula. It would be equal to negative log 0 0.25, all right? I can write that, let me check with my calculator. All right, so negative log 0.25. 0 0.602. All right, that is correct. 
right? So that's 0 0.60, all right? Now, if the acid, for example, if it's sulfuric acid, so let me do an example with sulfuric acid. If sulfuric acid dissociates, all right? You should get two hydrogen ions plus this sulfate ion. All right. When hydrochloric acid dissociates, you get one hydrogen ion and one chloride ion. So if they give the concentration for sulfuric acid, whatever the concentration is, they are going to multiply by two for the hydrogen ion concentration. So for example, concentration of a sulfuric acid solution The first thing we need to do here is multiply zero, zero point five four times two. I think that should give us one point zero eight. Let me check. Yes, sir. All right. So pH would be negative log. 1.08, how much I get? Negative log 1.08. It's in a negative number. All right, let me just change the, the concentration. Sir, it's a negative number. Let me just change the concentration. At 0 0.05 times 2, that would be 0 0.10. And get a pH of 1. Yes, yes sir. All right. Yes, sir. All right, so for strong acids, all you need to pay attention to is the type of acid. So first, if it's strong acid, you can apply the formula directly. Then once you spot it's a strong acid, look how many hydrogens are present. If it's one, it's okay. If it's two hydrogen, you will multiply it by two. All right, so this is for strong acids. All right, anybody writing? I'm going to erase the board. Let me know. All right. Someone's mic is on again. Just check. So, yes. I asked if anyone knows. The last one, if you could, I just go it over. Is it Pete? Before you erase the last one, can you please just go it over? All right. So the last one, it's a strong acid, right? The only difference between it and the first one is that it has, whenever it dissociates, you are getting two hydrogen ions. So like in terms of uh, mole ratio, if you look at it, one mole, of your sulfuric acid gives you two mole of H plus. So whatever the concentration for the sulfuric acid, 
you should times it by two to get the amount of hydrogen. All right, so for sulfuric acid, whatever the concentration is, you times it by two to get the concentration of hydrogen. And the reason for that, whenever it dissociates, it get, you are going to get two hydrogen ions. When hydrochloric acid dissociates, you only get one hydrogen ion. So the amount of H plus is the same as HCl. But for sulfuric acid, the amount of H plus is two times the amount. Is that clear? Yes, sir. We're going to look at weak acid now. All right, so unlike strong acid that completely ionizes in solution, a weak acid does not. And so because of that, we're going to get an equilibrium re reaction being set up. For example, if you have ethanoic acid, right, when it dissociates, you will get the ethanoic ion and the hydrogen ion. And this goes for any weak acid. For the weak acid, it loses a hydrogen ion. An equilibrium reaction is set up. For example, the next weak acid is carbonic acid. So you get HCO3 minus plus H plus. All right, so for weak acids, it's actually an equilibrium reaction. All right, and from if it's an equilibrium reaction, from the concept of equilibrium, you know that we can have an equilibrium constant. So for this reaction, because it's the dissociation of an acid, we are calling it the acid dissociation constant, which is Ka. Now, if you look at this equation up here, right? When one mole of the acid dissociates, we are getting the same amount of negative ion and hydrogen ion, right? We are getting one ethanoid ion and one H plus. So these two are equal. In our equilibrium reaction, instead of putting CA3, COO minus, times H plus, because the concentration of the two of them are equal, we don't need to put in this, this. all right? So these two are equal. Right, so let me just put an example. So if this is two and this is two, if you multiply both of them, you will get four. So I'm saying two times two, we would just have Two squared, all right? If you look to the left-hand side of the board, at equation six, where you see Ka is equal to H plus squared, this is where it is coming from. The, when the weak acid dissociate, you are getting one hydrogen ion and the negative ion used. Both of them are equal, so we don't need to put both of them in the equation. So just use hydrogen ion. And so I'm going to put H plus squared instead of ethanoid ion times H plus. Right. So that is where the formula for a weak acid is coming from. Okay. A is equal to H plus squared divided by concentration of the acid. And remember, equilibrium, it is always the products divided by the reactants. 
it would be CH3 COOH. Now, when it comes to weak, weak acid calculation, two things normally happen. We can give you the Ka and ask you for the value of pH. Or we can give you the pH and ask you to calculate Ka. So we are going to work those two scenarios now. You are given Ka and I ask you for pH. And then I give you the pH and ask you to find Ka. So just a second. All right, ready. I'm going to clear the equations now from this side of the board. So this calculation, you can label it pH from AA. And so here you are given the Ka, the concentration of the acid, you are asked to find pH. All right, so as we know, pH is equal to negative log, the concentration of hydrogen ions. But clearly in the question, you do not have the concentration of the hydrogen ions. What you're going to do, write the expression for Ka. So Ka is equal to H plus squared divided by the concentration of ethanoic acid. You're going to cross multiply. And so you will get H plus squared is equal to Ka times concentration of ethanoic acid. Now, to get rid of the square, we are going to square root this side of our equation. So that means H plus is equal to the square root of Ka times the concentration of the weak acid. All right, so you can make a note from here. If you read the question and the, the Ka, the concentration of the acid, and ask you to find pH, they're asking you to find pH, and they give the Ka, and the concentration. Just know that to get the hydrogen ion concentration, this is a formula down here. All right, so this is where we're actually starting our calculation by finding the square root of Ka times the acid. So let's do that on this side of the board.
right? You can try it and tell me answers. So I will give you a minute to try it and then come out. You can share your answers in the chat or load. Right. So if you want to try it, I will give you a minute to do so and you can share your answer. All right, so someone got 2.53 for the pH. Next one said 2.4. All right, so let us see now. For my hydrogen ion concentration, all right. So in here I got 8.5. 8.5. Times 10 to the minus 6. And when I take the square root of that, I get 2.92 times 10 to the minus 3. And so pH, now that I have the, the hydrogen ion concentration, I can just go ahead and say negative log 2.92 times 10 to the minus three. All right, 2.5, 2.53, all right. Go ahead, Anish, you have a question? Go ahead. You can ask it. Sir, you lost me at the Ka is equal to the concentration of H plus ion squared over concentration of the acid right there. This, this equation here? Remember? Yes, sir. Right, so remember Ka for weak acids. I remember the so weak acids are equilibrium reactions. So just look back down here now. So for ethanoic acid, it's an equilibrium reaction. When it dissociates, so oh, by the way, when it's a weak acid, you must use your to edit arrows because as I said, it's an equilibrium reaction. So this is what happens when your weak acid dissociates. Now, if it's an equilibrium reaction, that means you will have an equilibrium constant. This is an acid dissociating. So we call it Ka for the acid dissociation constant. And as you know, for equilibrium reactions, it is the products over the reactants. When one of these dissociate, you will get one hydrogen ion and one negative ion. So basically, these two are equal, right? So put in H plus squared is the same thing as saying CH3COO minus times H plus because these two are equal, we just use hydrogen and say H plus squared. Is it any clearer for you? Yes, sir. All right. So once you're asked to write a Ka expression for, the, for any weak acid given as the product or your, the product, as your numerator, you just put H plus squared. And then you put the acid to the line. All right, so that is why I started. I started out by saying Ka is H plus squared. All right, I don't include the ethanoic ion. All right, and then all you need to do now is transpose so you can get the H plus ion. This formula here, it is not going to change. So when I get Ka, I want pH. You are transposing this formula. It always ends up being the square root of Ka 
times CA3 times whatever we said we are given. All right. So that is what we did. And then we just plug in the formulas here. Once you get your hydrogen, once you get your hydrogen ion concentration, then you go ahead and take the, the negative log of it. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Well, if you answer slightly off, it's okay because yes, they will make once it's in range, all right? So because your answer will vary based on how, how you round off. But it shouldn't be too far off. If we get two point, what did I say my answer was? 2.53, so if we get 2.549, right, it's okay. All right, and we, and you would have shown your working out. So we would have known that it's all your round off, your answer would vary slightly, all right? So that's good. All right, so just make a note, this is when you're out to find the pH from AA. All right. Go ahead, Christian, please. Your hand, your hand is raised. If you have a question, Chrissy, you can go ahead. All right, so let's continue. We are going to do the reverse now. So we have the pH, let me put it on the board. Um, so the pH is equal to, I got 2.53. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to use this pH, right? And this concentration, and we should get back our Ka. So first, let me know if I can if I can erase the board. Is anybody writing at the moment? Let me know. Got it. I'm on. There is, there is Dean. If you have a question, you, you can go ahead for a start again. Is streaming live on YouTube? Streaming live on YouTube. Right, somebody's, somebody's mic is on. All right, so let's go again. So this time now. Sir? Yes. Um, they're asking how oh, we got the H plus to be um how you transpose from the Ka is equal to the concentration of H plus over the the concentration of the ion. All right. So we know that Ka is equal to H plus. All right. So if anyone in here can keep an eye on the comments, if possible over the channel and I will respond. All right, so the first thing we do, we bring the H plus squared over to the left hand side. And we bring the Ka to the, to the right hand side. We're going to multiply Ka by the acid. And H plus squared is going to be the left hand side. So what we will have now is that H plus squared is equal to Ka times the concentration of the of the acid. All right. So you bring the H plus to the left hand side and the Ka over to the to the right hand side. So it will it will multiply the acid. Once you do that, we need to get rid of the square. To get rid of the square, we square root the other side of the equal sign. Then the, the next step, we will have H plus instead of H plus squared. 
So we have h plus, it will now be equal to the square root of Ka times whichever acid you are going to use. All right. So that's what happened. You just bring over the H to one side, the Ka to the next side. Get rid of the square, you square root the, the sign of the, of the equal sign. All right. Okay. So that's, yeah. All right, so for the next question now, I'm going to put it here. All right, so the pH of a 0 0.5 moles per dm cube with a noic acid solution is 2.53. Calculate Ka. So in question one, we gave you Ka, and we gave you the concentration and ask you for pH. This time around, I gave you the pH and the concentration and ask you to find Ka. So this is the approach now. All right, so we are trying to find Ka. So let's all start out with, with that equation. You can type to this calculation now. This is Ka from pH. So we're doing the opposite. We want Ka from pH. Whenever this is this scenario then, it is where you start out. We know that Ka is equal to H plus squared divided by concentration of the acid. So again, in this question, we do not have the hydrogen and concentration. If you are given pH, I want the H plus concentration, H plus concentration, is equal to antilog. I don't know how your calculator is set up. All right, but for mine, when I'm doing it, I press shift log. All right, so hold on. It's not negative log, it's antilog, then negative pH. Let me just correct that. Antilog, negative pH. So I would press shift, negative 2.53. You can press second function on yours. All right, so when I do that, shift, shift log, negative 2.53. You get 2.5 times 10 to the minus three. Anybody else? Your try to get that. Oh, sorry, it's not sorry, just shift. 2.95 times just 10 to the negative three. Just a second. It's not shift only, shift log. Shift log. So you say you shift log and get how much? Sir, 2.95 times 10 to the negative 3. 
Right. Didn't say that a while ago? Just checking because I got 2.95 as well, yeah. So you're good. All right, someone texted. Just check. All right, 2.5, good. All right. 2.95, sorry. All right, so now that you have your hydrogen ion concentration, you can go ahead now and put it into the Ka formula. For this, the first thing we do, find the hydrogen ion concentration, then we can go ahead and find Ka. Let me just erase here. All right, just to group into danger, that's good. It's still good because I use 2.53 and I use 2.54. So that's the slight difference, but it's still good. All right, so all we need to do now is continue and say Ka. Is equal to 2.95 times 10 to the minus three, and we square that divided by the concentration of the acid, which was 0 0.5. All right, they can work that out and share your answer. Yes, it's already streaming on YouTube, so once it ends, it's there. Five point nine times ten to the negative three. Five point nine. We're supposed to get about yes, one point seven something. All right, let me check. One point seven four times ten to the negative five. Right. Oh, I saw it. I didn't square it. Okay. So how much I got? One point seven. How much? Four. Okay. All right. So you realize we got back the Ka, right? So in the first question, I gave you the Ka, 1.74 times 10 to the minus five and the concentration and asked you to find pH. You got the pH of close to 2.53, right? So all I did now was give you the pH and the concentration and ask you to find Ka, all right? So let me look for one now and you will do it yourself. Let's give me a second. Where was it? All right, here we go. Is anybody writing? Because I'm going to clear the board and the next question. Yes, sir, I'm writing. Please hold on. Okay. All right, I'm going to put it at the top, right hand corner. I'm finished, thank you. Okay. So this question, all right, I won't, it's a past paper, but it's still same principle, all right, 2016. All right, so it says, Thank you. 
So whenever they ask for the dissociation equation, that's the equilibrium reaction here. All right, so that was part I. I'm going to give you about five minutes so that everyone can try it and then I'll work it out. All right, so it's now 5.51, at 5.55, I will start working it.
All right. So I'm going to start work working it now. Any answers before I start? You can share if you like. So I'm just clear the right side up the board. If you need a little more time, you can say so as well. I can give you the next minute. More time, please. Repeat. Sir, I was asking for a little more time. Okay. All right, so. Um, for those who have texted, your answers are correct. So for those who text me their answer, they are correct. Okay, sir. All right. All right, so the first part now, it asks us to write the equation to represent the dissociation of carbonic acid. All right, let me just close the chart. All right, so part one, dissociation of carbonic acid H2, CO3, remember, double edit arrows. Also, ensure you put state symbols. So let me do that as well. Just to put your state symbols. All right, so that's the equation. It says write the Ka expression. So we know once it's a weak acid, Ka is equal to H plus squared divided by the concentration of the acid. In this case, it's carbonic acid. And then it asks us to calculate the pH of a 0 0.1 moles per dm cube. It gave us Ka. So again, this is asking us to find pH from Ka. So we know we should transpose this equation for H plus. So again, we are going to carry the H plus to one side over to the left. The Ka will come to the right and multiply the carbonic acid. Oh, you, will, you will have H plus squared. Meter my please, whoever that is. Right, and again, get rid of the square. You have to square root the next side. Get the square root of Ka from the concentration of H2CO3. So that's the square root of, what was it again? 4.5 and 10 to the minus seven. times the concentration, which was 0.1. And you should get, just a second. Okay. 
All right, so you should get 3.67. If you round it off, you will get 3.7. No, I'm just replying to a question in the chat. For the expression, no, just the just the equation. All right, so this is how you calculate Ka from pH. Let's practice again. All right, so let's look at the next question now. Right, is anybody writing? Well, Suppose they did it. All right, so just check in. Anybody writing at this present moment? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, give us second check if anyone is still writing. Give us second check. All right, so I'm going to play the board now. All right, so next now we're Shifting away from the acids and moving towards bases now. So, so just like with strong acid, so with the acids, that's when we use pH. All right, so strong acid, pH, acid. For the base now, it's pOH. All right, so pOH is negative log concentration of the hydroxide ion. When it comes to POH and KB, that's when the different equations comes into play. All right, so I will show you what I mean. For example,
We could ask you for the POH. But they could also just simply ask you for pH, but I'm going to do the two of them. Now, sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So just, just like with the strong acid, whatever the concentration of the base, that's also the concentration of the hydroxide ion. So let us start with Part one, so POH is equal to negative log concentration of the hydroxide ion, which is simply negative log 0 0.01. And we get two. The POH is two. Now remember, I gave you a formula earlier that says pH plus POH is equal to 14. That means if I want pH, pH is equal to 14 minus pH sorry, minus POH. And the POH we just calculated is two. So the pH is equal to 14 minus two, which is equal to 12. And as expected, it's a basic solution. So the pH should be above seven. All right, so if you get the, we can give you the concentration of a base and ask you for the pH. Second way you can do it, so it's two ways that you can do it. All right, um, Tristan, if you, you sir, the, yeah. Sir, we get the 14, All right, yes, sir. The 14, so it's from the, you know, the pH scale from zero to 14. Oh, yes. Oh, right. So, right. Yeah, so the pH, right. So pH plus pOH, it's add up to 14. So you have either the pH or the pOH. You want the other one, you will just subtract it from 14. All right. There's a second way you can do it. All right, so if you want, well, this one is more straightforward, but I will show you the next way as well. So if you want the pH and I give you the concentration of the hydroxide ion, what you could do, if you remember, KW is equal to H plus times OH minus all right, and KW, it has a value of one times 10 to the minus 14. So if I, want the, if I want pH, I need the hydrogen ion concentration. And to get that, all I need to do is divide KW by the OH ion concentration which is one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0 0.01. I get one times 10 to the minus 12. So oh, this is the hydrogen ion concentration. So now pH is equal to negative log one times 10 to the minus 12. And 
And again, the answer is 12. So if you are given, if you are asked to find the pH of a basic solution, there is two ways to do it, right? You can calculate the pOH and subtract it from 14. Or you, you divide Kw by the hydroxide ion concentration, and that will give you the hydrogen ion concentration. All right. And once you have H plus, you can go ahead and find pH. For strong, strong acids, that's when you can just go ahead and find the pOH because the concentration of OH on the base is equal. All right. If you have any question, you can ask. If not, I will go to KB. So just like you have weak acid, you have weak base calculations as well. KW is the ionization constant for, for water. All right, so let me just make a note of that. What is pH equals to the Um, is it twelve? You, and yes. Welcome? Yes, twelve. Twelve. You don't have to use um, a rep just a reply to a comment. You only use standard form if the numbers are very large. All right? So if they are small like 0 0.51, you don't need to use it. It's only if you have a lot of zeros after the decimal point. I joined in a meeting, my mic on mute. You were a cousin. Have a question? Yeah, yeah, boy. All right, let me just, regarding to KW, because they can ask you for the equation. So water itself ionizes, so it can dissociate. You get H plus and OH minus. So this is where you get the equation from the, the ionization constant for water. Mm -hmm. Now remember for your equilibrium, we don't want water in the liquid state here. So it is just H plus times OH. So if they ask you for the equation to show the ionization of water, this is the equation you use. If you want to use two molecules of water, just give me a second. 
I'm just erase here. They can use one molecule of water. Or if you want to use two. But you can just use the equation above. But you would get this. Mm -hmm. All right, but first, let me just stick with this one, simpler. All right, so AB now, so time for weak base calculation. All right, I'm going to clear the end here screen now. So the I just is basically the same as H plus. Yes, the H plus, all right, let me just. This, the hydrogen, the hydrogen ion is a simplification of the hydroxonium ion. So in reality, we don't have H plus ions in solution. It's actually H zero plus. But to keep things a bit simpler, we just use H plus. All right, yes, I'm just doing the uh, topics, but probably when uh, it's time for MCQ for unit one, for paper one, I will do PSP. All right, but because it's not a part of the broad topics for paper two, all right, I'm just focusing on the broader topics. All right, so I'm going to put a question for, for week base. All right, so as they so KB. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, can you please go back up or are you erase the board? Hold on, let me undo. Thank you. I just want to take a picture. Okay, sure. Finish. Thank you. All right. I don't have, Ben say, you'll have to send me an email. I don't have any Google chat at the moment or an extra, um, extra class classroom. Just send me an email. All right, so maybe. Um, all right, so for KB, it will be the hydroxide ion squared divided by the concentration of your base. All right, so for example, now, the pH, Thank you. 
All right, so for this, the through the pH, right? They concentrate, they give you pH and concentration, and they want Kb. So Kb is the hydroxide ion concentration squared divided by the concentration of the base. So our first objective for this type of question would be to get the hydroxide ion concentration. All right. So we have the pH. So this is where you have to you have to remember your formulas. You can know when to apply them. If you have the pH and you need the hydroxide ion concentration, one of the formulas I would use. All right. So I remember that pH. All right. So let's look at it from this angle. If I need OH, I know that I can get OH from POH, all right? And I can get OH using KW divided by the hydrogen ion concentration. If I know I can get OH from POH, I can get POH from pH. I need OH, I know I can get OH from pOH, but I did not get pOH. I was given pH, but I can get pOH from pH. Remember, pOH would be equal to 14 minus pH because pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So if I want pOH, it would simply be 14 minus 11.85, and I would get 2.15, all right? So now that I have pOH, I can go ahead and calculate OH. Anybody remember or have an idea how we can get OH from pOH? Yes, sir. What should I do? Um, so you um, negative P, say, say, anti log, right? POH. Continue, right? So the hydroxide and concentration would be equal to anti log negative POH. So you are correct. So if we do that, so anti log negative. 2.15 and I get 7.08. You can try it for yourself as well. So I get 7.08 times 10 to the minus 3. All right, so that's the hydroxide ion concentration. Once I have that now, I can go ahead and calculate AB. Just remember, when you're doing the antilog, you must also include the negative sign for the pH. All right. So we have the hydroxide ion concentration. We can go ahead now and calculate AB. I'm doing that up here. So KB is equal to OH. Minus square. Well, I already have that. I'm just plugging the numbers. That would be 7.08 times 10 to the minus 3 squared divided by the concentration of the of the base. That's 0 0.1. So what was my answer? Five points. That five point how much? Point okay. zero one to ten times ten to the four. Five point zero one times ten to the minus five. 
divided by, if I do that, divided by 0 0.1, and I get 5.01 times 10 to the minus 4. All right. This calculation is KB from pH. All right. Because we're going to do the reverse after this. So just make a note. This is the approach that you will take if you are asked to find KB from pH. Remember, you have KA from pH, pH from KA. This one is KB from pH. So we're going to do the reverse of it now, where we use KB, the concentration, and find the pH. So as soon as I finish reporting, all right, I'll get to two minutes and then we'll start the reverse where we calculate the pH from KB. Oh, ethyl amine. Uh, oh, let me write the K A, the K B, not the K B, the equation for that. Here is the question. Ethyl amine is an organic compound, so if they gave you that they would give the formula. Right. It's CH3, CH2, NH2, so that it's ethyl amine. Would be a hydrogen from water. Right, let me erase. Anybody writing from up here? It's a base, so of course it would gain a proton. It's Na3 plus, plus OH minus. And so that would be the equation. It would accept a proton. All right, so if you're finished with this, what I want you to do now, let me give you the, the question now. What was the concentration again I gave you for the base? 2.1. All right. Thanks. All right, so I'm not going to help you as yet. So if you remember when you we were calculating H from K from Ka, it's kind of similar. But I will just allow you to observe it and see what you can do. All right, I'm going to give you four minutes to just attempt it. All right. So 
So, I mean, you can take a similar approach. Look at what you need, calculate pH, and see how you can get it. All right. So it's now 6.31, 6.35, I will work it out. Those who gain back the 7.85, 7.8, that's correct. You should get back the same pH that we started with. So once you get it, it's correct. If you get 11.8, it's probably just how you, your, your round off. All right, so yeah, it's still good. Ready again, I need the next minute. Let me know. All right, let's go. All right, so it says, yes, you're also correct, Rashan. All right, 
Then this question now, we want the pH. We calculate the pH. They gave us the concentration and they gave us AB. So what we could do, so we know we need hydrogen ions in order to calculate pH. Again, based on the formulas, we know we can get hydrogen ions from pH if we antilog it. And we know we can get hydrogen ions from doing AW divided by the OH ion, all right? So let us do the formula, AB. And so on, so pH is equal to negative log hydrogen ion concentration. We know that Kb is equal to OH minus squared All right, again, as usual, cross multiply, they get OH minus. I'm going to skip the one step and just go straight to the square root. All right, now that we have the OH concentration, we can do two things. You can choose which one you prefer, all right? But the quickest route, we could find the OH and subtract it from 14. Or you could divide this. All right, so let me just do the two ways and you can choose which one you prefer. But this is the first part of the calculation where you'll find the hydroxide ion concentration. Once you have that, we can do two things. And so we can calculate the POH, which would be negative log 7.08 times 10 to the minus three. And we'll get 2.15. So POH is equal to two point one five. So that means pH is equal to 40 minus 2.15. And that should give you back 11.85. All right, so that's one way of going about it. The next way is that H plus 
is equal to a w, which is one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 7.08 times 10 to the minus three. And so that's kw divided by the hydroxide ion concentration. One point four one times ten to the minus twelve. All right, so then pH is equal to negative log one point four one times ten to the minus twelve. Seven point eight five again. So you can choose which method you prefer. And now make a note of this calculation. This calculation is pH from KB. So when you want pH from KB, you first need to find your hydroxide ion concentration. If you want to break it up into steps, the first thing you need to do is find the hydroxide ion concentration. If you're coming by this route, the next thing you do is to find the hydrogen ion concentration and finally calculate pH. You can think of it as three steps. Step one, find the hydroxide ion concentration, find hydrogen ion, then pH. Or find the hydroxide ion, then you find pOH, subtract pOH from 14, and you get pH. So it's three steps. All right. Any question before I move on? All right. All right, let me know when I can erase. All right. All right. So here's a past paper again. I don't remember which year this one is, but it's a bit old. So Basically, you have a sodium hydroxide solution. Thank 
So the concentration is 0 0.05, and they want you to calculate the pH of it. I told the hospital person that I prepared. And where is KB? But let me write the question first and then I try to address you. I mean, for number one, we remember number one is a strong base. You only use Ka and Kb for weak acid and weak base. So you don't need a Kb for number one. Formula for methanic acid, if you need it, it's HCOOH. This question is that I am writing now is from the study guide.
Right, for number one, right, let me check. All right, so for those of you who texted 1.3, that is the POH. For those of who texted 12.7, you are correct. So just remember, for number one, you are calculating pH and not POH. So after you find POH, you must do something else. All right, so we will complete these and then we touch on some, some rates of reaction. Excuse me, sir, um, question. So we're just telling you the answers. You're not working them out. Just on, I'm saying the answers. I'm, I'm, I'm going to work them out. But I'm just giving you an opportunity to try it first. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to start working them at seven. So it's 6.56. I'm going to start working them at seven o'clock. Right, so the answer for number one is 12.7. So I can tell you that it is 12.7. Just stop at 1.3, that is just the POH. You must do something else to get 12.7. Wait, for number two, you cannot calculate two without KB. Sorry about that, I mean KA. So for number two, 
you would need KA. Let me see, just check. You would need KA. Oh, sorry, I mixed up for number two. The concentration is 0 0.025. Sorry, let me just fix number two. So the Ka is six times 10 to the minus three. Sorry about that. For the Ka, right. The Ka is six times ten to the minus three, and the concentration is zero point zero two five. All right, so now, now you can go ahead and calculate it. We have the Ka and the concentration. All right, for number three, two, all right. Let me see if anybody did that one. Oh, for no, all right, let me check number two. All right, let's change. All right, one, for number two, you should get a pH of 1.91. Of 1.92 is for fine as well. Depends how you are rounding off. All right. So for number one, the pH is 12.7. For number two, it's 1.91. All right, so I'm going to give you one more minute and then I work them. And for number three, if you have done it, for hydrogen ion concentration, I got 3.98. 
times 10 to the minus 12 over OH, it's 2.51 times 10 to the minus three. Three point nine eight. Yes, that is correct. All right, so let's go now. All right, I'm going to erase number one. All right, so for non, for non number one, the important thing to remember, it's a strong base. So all you need is the concentration of the hydroxide ion. You will first find the pH, subtract it from 14, get the pH. The first thing that we will say for number one, uh, just a second, where's the pin? Just a second. I'm looking for the pen I'm using. I see it. All right. All right. So POH, so we have to find POH. So you are not finding pH, you are finding POH. And how much did we, how much did I get? What did you get for the POH? Let me check. Where was it? 1.3. All right, yeah. POH is 1.3. And then you will say pH is equal to 14 minus POH, which is 1.3. And you should get 12.7. So it's a strong base. You don't need KB. Let's go ahead and find POH, subtract it from 14. And you have pH. Number two now, you are given concentration. Of course, methanoic acid is a weak acid. That's why they have to give you KA. All right, so the concentration is 0 0.025. All right, and KB is 6 times 10 to the minus 3. All right, let's erase that. All right, so as I know by no, right? We want pH, so we have to find hydrogen ion concentration. I'm just going to go straight ahead and say hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the square root of Ka, which was six times 10 to the minus three, and the concentration of the acid, which was 0 0.025. And I would get, how much did I get? 1.5 times 10 to the minus four. Yes, sir. And when you take the square root of that, you will get 1.22 times 10 to the minus two. So the H plus concentration is 1.22 times 10 to the minus two. All right, and then now, as I know, pH is equal to negative log 1.22 times 10 to 
the minus two, we get 1.91. All right, so that's that part. Now for number three, it says the concentration of HCl. All right, this formula that they gave, it's benzoic acid. Now, once you see COOH, it's a weak acid. You think that ends in no weak? It's an organic acid, and all of them are, are weak. So once if you go on the exam, once it ends in anoic, it's a weak acid. And the base that once you the name amine, it's a weak base. It doesn't matter what comes in front of it. Any amine, methyl, ethyl, propyl, any amine, and ammonia, these are weak bases. All right. Acids, once it's ended, all of you have done organic chemistry. So any carboxylic acid is a weak acid. All right. All right so this is the concentration of HCl and benzoic acid are both 0 0.25. Why is the pH different for these two acids, even though the concentration is the same? Anybody want to offer an answer? Sir, one is strong and the other is weak. That is correct. Can you explain? All right, so since one is strong and one is weak, how will, how will that affect the pH? All right, so Vashana has typed here. The answer says HCl completely dissociates into its ions in solution. And there's a higher pH, it's a strong acid. Whereas benzoic acid partially dissociates into its ions in solution. And there's a lower pH. All right, the only thing I would add to that when you say it's a strong acid and as a higher pH, if it's a strong acid, it will, it, will, it will generate more hydrogen ions. So as I said, it associates completely, therefore more hydrogen ions will be in solution. All right, so you, so you are correct. Stronger acid will have a lower pH. Let me see if I put, let me just see how you stated that part. No, the stronger acid will have a lower pH. So the more hydrogen ions. So let, let us just use that as a, as a reminder. Let me just put it on the board here. All right, let me erase down here. Because the stronger the acid, the more hydrogen ions in solution, but the lower the pH. So the pH scale is from 0 to 14. So we're looking at the pH scale. So we know 7 is neutral. So the closer you are to 0, the stronger the acid. All right, so just remember that. Lower pH, stronger the acid. All right. Higher pH, as the pH is increasing, it is getting less acidic, less acidic, all right? So your explanation was good is just that, you just switch it around, it, the pH will be lower for the strong acid, all right? And someone else said, because one is completely ionized and the other is partially ionized. That is good too, but I just want you to include the hydrogen ion concentration because how it becomes acidic is because of the hydrogen ions. What, he, what, what both of you have said is correct, but just include the amount of hydrogen ion because it is the hydrogen ions that are causing the changes in pH. The more hydrogen ion, the lower the pH. So that is why strong acids of lower pH because they, they have more hydrogen ions, all right? So that's what happened for that one, all right? 
Read. I tell you what, I'm going to I'm going to look at instead their definition and conjugate acid and base. I'm going to have to do, I'm going to do a class on Monday. I'm not sure of the time as it. I'm going to do a two-hour session for rates. Right? Because it's after seven already. So I'm going to show you conjugate acid and base. All right, and look at their definition. And sometime I will tell you, I will post the link again in the, what was it? The community section and send it as well. Sir, is there a WhatsApp group? No, I don't have a WhatsApp group. I won't be able to make one. I'm really busy at the moment. So if I make one, I wouldn't be able to be active in it. All right. Uh, so if you subscribe to my channel, make sure you click the notification bell. So when I make any, uh, I post any, any information, you will be notified. All right. And sometime I might just go live if I have a 30 minutes. I will just go live and practice a question. All right. So if you subscribe, just click the notification bell. So once I do it, you will see it, all right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So let's go to, all right, so let's answer about part two now. So they said that the pH of our solution was found to be, by the way, for number two, the concentration of both of them was 0 0.025, right? What would be the pH of the eight cl solution? If the concentration is 0 0.025, that should be straightforward. All right, so let me see what this person said. Anybody, if the, if the concentration is 0 0.025, it's a strong acid. So if it's a strong acid, what should you do? All right, so remember for strong acid, all right. So the concentration of hydrogen is the same. Right, so just take the negative log of it. Right, right. and it's 1.6, that is correct. All right, so for number two, for part two now, it says the pH of a solution it was found to be 11.4. Calculate the hydrogen and concentration. So what did, can you share some answers? What did you get for your hydrogen ion concentration? If you want to share, let me see what did I get. You should get 3.98 times 10 to the minus 12 for the hydrogen ion. For the OH, it should be 2.51 times 10 to the minus three. All right, so there are two things that you can do for this question. All right, let me just erase the left-hand side of the board. All right, so we have the pH, right? So we can simply say hydrogen ion is the antilog negative the pH, which is 11.4. All right, and that would give me, right, that would, that would have given me the 3.98 3 times 10 to the minus 12, all right? Now also, uh, once I get this right, the OH ion concentration, would be KW, which is one times 10, one times 10 to the minus 14, divided by the 
H plus concentration, which is 3.98 times 10 to the minus 12. All right, so remember, so this formula is KW over OH. All right, so do that and we should get, so let me see now, one exo negative 14. I get 2.51 times 10 to the minus three. 2.51 times 10 to the minus three. All right, what you could also do, right? You could say for the hydroxide ion concentration, you could do this POH is equal to 14. All right, let me just section that off. POH is equal to 14 minus the pH, which is 11.4. And that would go at 2.6. And then hydroxide ion concentration is equal to antilog negative 2.6. We should get back that answer as well. All right, I did get back it. 2.51 times 10 to the minus three. All right, so that's how you would approach it. Just give me a second to plug in my laptop. Um, Olivia, meet a mic. What's his what mic is on? Chanel. All right, ready again. So yeah, so that is how you would do those calculations. All right, let's look at the definition for strong acid and strong base. We already know that strong acid completely ionize, if you want to say, dissociate in solution, right? However, if they ask you to Define it in terms of Branstead and Lowry theory, right? So remember Branstead. Let me clear off some of some of the board. Is anybody writing? All right, let me clear this. So Bernstein said that acids are proton donors. Therefore, the strong acids readily gives up a proton, All right? So therefore a weak acid simply put, as I said, does not readily give up a proton.
So when you say a strong acid is one that completely dissociates, right? Like the HCl. That means HCl molecules. So the amount of HCl I have, so let me just do this quickly. When we speak of an acid completely dissociating, it means that the amount of acid molecules that are present in solution, if it's a strong acid, all of them will dissociate. All right, so that is why you will have a lot of hydrogen ions in solution for a strong acid, because all of the molecules will dissociate into hydrogen ions and of course, the chloride ion. So this is the same thing as saying, the acid readily gives up the proton, all right? Show it better. HCl plus H2O. And you would get H3O plus, plus the hydroxide ion. All right, so in the presence, they say water, in the presence of a stronger acid, or in the presence of an acid, it will act as a base and accept a proton from the acid. So that is why I said earlier, you don't have H plus ions in solution. It's actually H zero plus, all right? So just know that in terms of branstad lowry theory, the strong acid readily gives up a proton because they describe it as a proton donor. Now, when you look at this equation, right? By the way, for strong acids, it's not really an equilibrium reaction because the equilibrium is so far to the right, it's basically a, a one-way reaction. So for strong acids, you don't need two arrows. For weak acid, we really, we really use the two arrows because it partially associates, as I said. Now, the, the two terms I want to just recap with you is conjugate acid and conjugate base. In an equilibrium reaction, right? So the forward reaction, we start out with an acid. All right, so of course, if hydrochloric acid is the acid, what is water? Water is the base, right? Right. Now for the reverse reaction, what do you think would be the acid? And what would be the base? So going from the right side now to the left, what do you think would act as the acid? HO plus or the OH minus ion. Anyone want to offer an answer? Which one do you think will be the acid in that in the reverse reaction? The OH minus. Would be the acid or the base? All right. Some people are texting. HO is the acid, right? So what would happen? The HO will donate back the hydrogen to OH minus. So you will get back the what? Wait, what am I doing? Sorry, my bad, hold on, my bad. <laughs> Not OH minus, sorry. It's supposed to be CL minus, not OH, sorry about that. All right, so the HO would donate the hydrogen to the chloride ion. So that means this is acting as an acid. So we are going to call it the conjugate acid. Conjugate acid. So the species that is formed from the base, so look, H2O plus is coming from the water, right? Water, which is the base, it accepted the proton form H2O plus. 
whatever species form from the base, that's the conjugate acid. The H2O plus is coming from water when it gains a proton, not the HCl. Likewise, the species that is formed from the acid is the conjugate base. That means the chloride ion is your conjugate base. All right. So the forward reaction that is where you put acid and base. And for the reverse reaction, that is where you have conjugate acid, conjugate base. Whatever is acting as the acid in the reverse reaction, you call it conjugate acid. And whatever is going to act as the base is the conjugate base. And remember, Bernstein and Lowry, they said that an acid is a proton acceptor. And the proton, by the way, we refer to the hydrogen ion as a proton. All right, so when we talk about proton donor and proton acceptor, it's talking about giving up a hydrogen ion and accepting a hydrogen ion. So the chloride ion is a base because it accepts a hydrogen ion to form back its cell. All right, so that's how you identify conjugate acid, conjugate base. So the base in terms of definition, it's the same thing, strong base. So bases are proton acceptor. All right, let me just put it on the board so you can have it. All right. Let me not just say it. Right. So a base is a proton acceptor. So a strong base is a strong base. And remember, this is just pertaining to branstead lowry definition. All right, so let me just do one weak base reaction. As we know, ammonia is a weak base. If you react it with water, so now the ammonia is the base, it will accept a proton. So you would get NH4 plus water losing a proton, it will form OH minus. So ammonia is the base, and you should be able to pick up this from the equation. Because what is the difference? If you look at ammonia, here ammonia is NH3, and on the right hand side it is NH4. That simply means it would have gained a proton. So just by looking at the equation, you should be able to tell if it's an acid or a base. All right, so ammonia clearly accepted a proton. So it is a base. Water would have then given up a proton, making it the acid. Remember the conjugate acid is whatever is formed from the base. 
So what was formed from the base? NH4 or ROH? Which one was formed from the ammonia? NH. Right. The NH, right, the NH4, right? If NH4, the, the ammonium ion consisted is coming from the base, that would make it the conjugate acid. All right. I'm just going to put C acid or conjugate acid. All right. So that means the conjugate base would be the hydroxide ion because it is coming from water, which is acting as the acid. So that would make it the conjugate base. So that is how you would identify conjugate acids and bases. All right. I'm going to wrap it here for tonight. Tomorrow, it's going to be module one. That one is starting at six, not five o'clock. And right. so tomorrow is module one. Monday again, as I said, I'm not sure of the time as yet. We are going to do some more of module two. You're welcome. All right. I'm going to end it here. If you're, not, if you're finished with writing, you just let me know and I will close the live. All right, class. Yeah, welcome everyone. Yes, it's it is the same it is the same link for tomorrow. All right, if you need anything, just send me an email. It's six o'clock Jamaica time. So anytime you see in the link, it's Jamaica time. All right, so bye everyone. I'm going to close it. The YouTube name, Mr. Here. I'll just type it for you quickly. Where will the recording? It's on the YouTube channel. What's the name of the channel for anyone who asks? All right, so I'm going to close it now. So have a good night, everybody. All right.